All right, mic check, one, two. Here's a little crank for you guys. Uh, assuming that the mic is working, I'll be back in just a minute. My plan for today is to bring down all the four, four kittens with crank and let them run around while we're doing mailbag. So no gadget today, unfortunately. But uh, lots of kittens in just a minute. So let me go get the other kittens and make sure I've got everything ready for mailbag. I'll be with you in just a minute. Okay, I still have to grab a couple things, so I will leave you with them for a moment. All right, little scaredy kittens, it's just me. Just me, look at that, all this new stuff to look at and play with. Let's give you something familiar. Look, come and check out my stinky shoes, you know those. Here comes Cranky. Uh, I should have brought something soft in to sit on, but that's all right. We'll just do this for the moment. And... Oh, 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 wow, I spilled the coffee, but not on a kitten, that's good. Okay, we'll worry about that later. Worry about everything later. Hi everybody, uh, let me worry about whether or not you guys can hear me. Let's check that out, one second here. I'm guessing you can hear me since I don't see anybody complaining that I'm just talking, my mouth's moving and nobody can hear me. Uh, so, what is uh, news to start with, I guess? And the only news this week that I processed at all, I was spent the whole week with Crank. Um, we brought her into the vet. The vet thought that she could use some enemas. Um, and uh, I've been giving uh, lots and lots of those uh, for the last couple of days. She's trying to poop right now. I should grab a wipe and help her out a little. Um, so the enemas actually, uh, they, uh, yesterday, they, they finally, like we finally had a little bit of a breakthrough, I guess. I mean, we can call it that. It's really disgusting if you think about it, but uh, uh, things really took off yesterday all of a sudden, and she was doing fine after that. Uh, really feeling good yesterday, and that felt good to me. Um, I thought maybe we could take a little break from them, but I can see from her straining that she could probably use another one even though she's mainly clear today uh, and she's in a lot less uh, discomfort too like she used to just scream and scream and scream when I would touch her butt but she's not doing that today so far and that is uh, I think a good sign I, I always have said since the first you know I was like she doesn't seem like she's really got diaper rash so why is she making such a fuss and I think it was just the pressure in there that was getting to her really more than anything uh, okay, you keep trying. You take care of this and we'll, uh, oh, I'll catch up with you, okay? Okay. All right, okay, okay, after mailbag. <clears throat> 
here for now. You see what you can do, okay? All right. So, so yeah, uh, lots and lots and lots of enemas, and she's finally got stuff that, like, she's pretty clear, and she was feeling so good yesterday. She was running around and playing last night uh, with these guys, which is why I thought to bring her in here, and it just felt really good to me. I, I was really glad, so... Uh, it looks like we're not quite out of the woods yet, based on how she's acting right this minute, but she feels so much better. Let me check your colon real quick, kiddo, since you walked back over here. Yeah, it's, it's basically empty. Uh, I mean, the part that I can feel. I learned from the vet that um, the part that I'm able to feel is probably only like the last third of it. So, you know, there's probably some still back in there to work out. But overall, it's, uh, it's, it's good news. I feel really good about her. You can see she's walking much better too. I guess the supplements are paying off for her. Uh, I think if we just kind of, so uh, we're also giving her lactulose to help keep her stool soft so it's easy for her to go. And I think if we stay on top of that and the supplements and some enemas probably on a regular ongoing basis for her, um, she's gonna be basically fine. Um, but we'll see. Um, that's that's really the only news this week. I don't know anything else that's happened. It's just been I've just been completely absorbed in that. Uh, so um, I I don't think there's anything else. I do think that it's next week that the four kids here go for their first appointment. So that's pretty exciting. They get to meet the vet for the first time. They're all so healthy and happy. I've been bringing them into the spa on the regular, and uh, they they're kind of just starting to figure out how to get on and off of the bed. Um, and uh, where the litter box is. So once they get that sorted, they'll be eligible for overnight visits to the spa too. Um, but uh, not quite sorted yet. Uh, still, they're, they're smart little kids and they'll get it really soon, I'm sure. Uh, wow, they're all playing behind these boxes. So I guess that's a bad view for you guys. Oh, okay, bye. I'm sure they'll come around once in a while while we're doing mailbag though. Uh, okay. Uh, where to start? I don't even know. Hi, buddy. Why can't I see so much of your whiskers? Do you have a wet face? Are you drinking some water? Okay. Uh, let's start here. I've got these rocks that, oh, uh, I've got two letters too, but we'll, we'll start with these rocks because they're right here. And uh, also I lost the... Uh, there's a postcard too, but I don't know where it went to. Uh, we'll find it in due time. Probably just fell off the back side of these boxes here. So you guys uh, remember Madam Amy came for a visit uh, a couple of weeks ago and she brought these little rocks that she painted for us uh, all the way from Europe. This is uh, obviously, it looks like a little heart. I'm sure that's why she chose this rock. It's got a nice flat face and otherwise looks like a little red heart. It's adorable. And uh, it's a teaspoon and it's got his birthday and it says one of a kind. And he's got those little blue eyes. It's beautiful. It's so pretty for a little teaspoon. And then this one is amazing. It is all the faculty is drawn here at the bottom. I think you can see that with their little names on them, including Teaspoon. And then uh, there is one star in this sky for every kitten and mom cat that have come to Kitten Academy. And some of the stars are uh, little standouts for various reasons that I'll leave it to you guys to guess. But it is so pretty and wonderful, and I've got it uh, sitting in the front hall. Uh, just one of the things that people see as soon as they come in the door. So I just thought I, I wanted to share that with you guys a couple weeks ago, and I just didn't think of it until this morning. So that's where we are. Um, before I go to the letter, let me also address this. Uh, Terror Bear sent a couple of really big things that I'm going to want to move out of the room right away. So let's just cover them. There is this rhinoceros ottoman. So we're really turning into the Ottoman Empire here. We've got so many of these things. Uh, I think it's going to be really fun to put them all together. Of course, um, the elephant and the triceratops are in the garage waiting for me to clean them. So it may be a little while before the elephant remakes his appearance and I can make all the jokes about crossing an elephant with a rhinoceros, uh, which I did this morning. You probably heard that uh, mic was still on when I did, I think. So uh, if you know it, you know it. It's an old joke. Then this is also from Terror Bear, if I didn't say that on Discord. Uh, it is, says it is a giraffe wicker condo and cat tree that is a giraffe. Um, but I'm skeptical that it's wicker because it is the heaviest thing in mailbag. It is so heavy. It's way too heavy to be wicker. Unless it's, you know, like 
all packed in here and a million feet high. So I wanted to open it up and take a look. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, it is oh, very, very heavy. Whoa. Okay. Well, I'm not going to put it together right now, so we're just going to have to kind of guess what it looks like. But look at that. That is the cutest wicker giraffe head. I did not imagine that. Let's see if there's a picture in the instruction manual. And it's got a big wicker basket that looks kind of like the hanging basket, which I just realized these kids haven't even seen one of those yet, and they're overdue for it. This must be the long neck and then four little legs. The basket is its body. The head will stick right out of the top of it. Uh, and it's so heavy because this is an iron frame, like the, or probably steel, like the, uh, like the hanging baskets are. So it's, this is extremely heavy, plus that MDF, uh, the medium density fiberboard for the base. I don't know what, I don't know what high density fiberboard is like because medium density weighs so much. And then it's got a little cushion to go inside, a big wooden base. It's going to be so lovely. Oh, that's just beautiful. Terror Bear, thank you for that. I really wanted to see what it looked like, but now I'm going to put it right back in the box, including the head, and we will get to it all later. Uh, oh, including the head and the neck. Okay, how was this in there? Let's try that. Okay. Kittens, I know I'm making a lot of noise, but you don't have to be so scared. Be a little bold, kiddos. Bold. Ah, there we go. Okay. So I want to move those two big boxes out of here right now, give us a little bit more breathing room for mailbag. And hopefully these kittens will come around a little bit more. I'm just going to slide this right out here. Oh, so I can see that we're starting to get together a bit of, uh, I guess, a wildlife theme, or maybe uh, maybe it's more of an African theme, or uh, I don't know. But uh, we've also got this jungle tunnel right here that I've been meaning to deploy. We've got all these animals. The Triceratops doesn't exactly fit, but the elephant, the rhino, the hippo, we can put all that together and uh, really do something with it. I don't know if we would do that in this room, or because uh, there's even more stuff in the basement. Um, or maybe we just take over the living room that way. It doesn't really have a theme out there yet. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We could also give the space theme a little bit of a break. So, yeah. Who knows? I don't know what I'm doing, so why, why should any of you? Okay, so our first letter. I am guessing that this is from Alice the Owl, but I don't actually know. So let's open it up and take a look. It feels like a lot of papers. That's another sign. <laughs> Aha, it is. Okay, good. Well, this will keep us going for a few minutes. Let's see. The following has been transcribed directly from input from pajamas, Cash twin, uh, Cash's twin, uh, Leaf Bagger, with minor corrections for grammar and usage. Dear Mr. A, Mom says Raffi and I have been here over a month. Mom, by the way, is actually my fourth mom after Spicy Mama, Skylight, and you. I've loved all of my moms, though they're all very different. Mom told me Kashmir is going to be adopted by someone who goes by Frudence on Discord and that he'll have a brother and a bunch of older sisters. That's good. He has a lot of practice being in a big family with a lot of sisters. Tell him to be good, not to be scared. They'll all love him, though some of the sisters might take longer to show it. Actually, I, from what I understand, they started getting along almost instantly, which is great. Um, well, maybe not all of them, but, but the one that, uh, the, what was the name of the one that she wanted him to play with? Uh, the kitten uh, that's his same age. Uh, well, it's not going to come to me, but that, oh, wait, no, because uh, it was a rock and roll name, wasn't it? Was it Axel? I think it was Axel. Yeah, because I thought it was really funny. Um, I don't know if she said this on the chat or not, if you guys know, but when I asked her, um, sometimes I remember to ask the adopters whether they're going to rename the kittens. Hang on, let me just, okay. Sometimes I ask the adopters if they're going to rename the kittens. So I remember to ask her that at the last minute. And she said, yeah, well, my other cats kind of have rock and roll names. Uh, you know, we've got Axl Rose and uh, wh whoever the others were. I don't remember. Uh, maybe there's a Ziggy or something. Uh, so uh, she said, um, 
obviously, you know, you could do like Johnny Cash, but uh, she's not the biggest fan of Johnny Cash. She thought, why not just leave his name the same? cashmere but spell it with a k like the zeppelin song and i thought that sounded really cool that's such a great idea cashmere uh, like the zeppelin song instead of cashmere like with a c yeah uh where were we uh it'll be good to have someone about his age to play with yes people get tired way faster than a sibling i'm real happy here mom is warm and soft and she makes such happy noises when i lie on her and purr she plays with us a few times a day and always makes sure rafter doesn't hog the toys she varies our food flavors and keeps the treats coming she started giving us these little crunchies that have extra flavor on the inside rafter and i both tried to figure out how to open the bag of these for those treats and now mom keeps them where we can't reach yeah those <laughs> those are the good stuff uh, mom calls me by my full name a lot, but she also calls me PJ, Peach, Pajama, Rama, Jammies, Kitten, Kitty, Kitten, Baby, Goblin, and Gremlin. Whoa. Those last two are mostly after I fish out the empty churu tubes from the trash. Oh, man. <laughs> Rafter is mostly Raffy, but also Raff, Rafter, Raptor, Velocirafter. Velocirafter's cute. Dino Girl, Teeny Tiny, Itty Bitty, BB, Kitten, Kitty, Goblin, and Gremlin. She gets calls those last, those last two a lot more than I do because mom uses it when she's hogging food, toys, or treats. Mom can be uh, mom can be about sharing her food. Um, I don't know what that word is, but that's okay. Uh, obviously, mom doesn't like to share her food. Sometimes she'll share her chicken, but sometimes she says it has garlic or onion in it. Most things, she breaks off a piece to share. Rafter and I both line up for string cheese. But I'm the only one that likes apple cider donuts. <laughs> what? Mom thinks it's funny when I try to open the container. Uh, Mom also thinks it's funny when I play with the TV, at least to a point. If I lean on it too hard or get behind it, she starts talking about someone named Disastro. She tried showing me a photo of him, but there was way more interesting piece of lint on her shirt. I don't think Raptor and I see the same thing when we look at a screen. She's way more interested. The only time I pay attention other than to bat at movement or bright colors is when I hear a cat or a bird. Sometimes I'll hear a tiny kitten crying and she says, that's me, but that's just silly. My meow is a, a lot more. Yeah, I guess if he wants to, he's okay with the kittens. Here, I should push these out of the way a little bit. I don't know where Crank went to. You don't see Crank from where you are, do you? No, you don't. She's probably back in her rocket pod. Oh, no, she's right behind me in the strawberry, in the big strawberry. She's graduated. Yeah, she's in the big one. Hi. Okay, that makes sense. Too much sense. And everybody else is back there chewing on cables and playing around on the cardboard. So, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, so I was going to say, um, if for your TV, I assume it's like a flat screen and uh, we don't want to have it knocked over or anything. That's important. Um, you know, you can buy like straps to strap it to the wall or to the furniture it's on so it doesn't fall down. But even better than that is you get like a good uh, mount for it, like a Visa mount. I, I mount all of our TVs, needed or not. I, it's wonderful. Uh, I just I think it's the best way to do it. So uh, let's see. Um, oh, and my monitors on my, for my computer, too. I put those on an arm. Again, needed it or not, I think it's, uh, it's such a much better way to do it. More sturdy. You never risk knocking it off of the desk or anything. Uh, it's, it's good. So, sometimes mom will meow back, and sometimes she just says squeak. She says that to Rafter more than me, but then Rafter is really squeaky. <laughs> One time, the downstairs neighbor's dog was chewing on a toy, and I ran to the window because I thought it was Raffy. Then Rafter jumped up next to me and I about leapt out of my skin. I do love that window though. I spend most of my day sleeping in the tower right next to it. We get all kinds of birds at the feeder, including one that's bigger than me. Raffy and I scared that one off the last time it came by. Totally unfair. We weren't doing anything, not even chattering or swishing our tails. We were just looking. I finally figured out how to get out when mom is filling the bird feeders, but it's real loud and scary out there. Raffy tells me that she was hunting a squirrel after I went in <clears throat> and would have caught it if mom hadn't picked her up. I believe her. She may be smaller, but Raffy is ferocious. If she's not sleeping, I have to be on guard for her to pounce on me. Sometimes she lets me groom her, but usually it ends in biting. Speaking of, mom got half my front claws trimmed yesterday before I squirmed loose. 
I got treats after and more treats every time I let her touch my other paw. Usually she turns away when I bite, but I think I figured out why it was okay that time. I watched her try to trim Ravi's claws and she was even squirmier and bitier. Mom didn't even get a half of hers. Raffi doesn't understand how lucky we were to be at Kitten Academy, but I do. Spicy Mama had it rough before she had us, and Skye never took it for granted how nice it was to be clean and warm all the time. Some kittens have a lot more to worry about than another kitten poofing at them because you stole her tube. We were safe and loved with plenty to play with and a steady supply of moms. <laughs> and without K.A., Mom would never have met us. Mom loves us so much. It makes her so happy to give us attention instead of the little scream she's always holding. She always laughs when I knock it out of her hand, except that one time it landed on Raffi because she had to make sure Raffi was okay. Don't worry, she was only startled awake. Uh, another great thing about moms is Auntie Sam's visits. Auntie Sam sits right at my level, so she's even easier to spoogle. Auntie Sam never gets tired of playing and almost always gives us treats. Raffi and I are having a contest to be Auntie Sam's favorite, and I'm winning because I purr louder than Raffi. We make her real happy, too. Thank you for being our mom until mom could get us. We're both such happy, smart kitties, mom says, because of your love and hard work. I know we didn't always make it easy, but you did an excellent job, and we'll always love you for it. Love, PJ. So sweet. Uh, and then there's a more. Dear Mr. A and DJ, again, thank you times a billion from the very bottom of my heart for fostering my snuggle support and all the other cats and kittens who've had the privilege of attending your fine institution. It's clear how much you love each and every one of them, and they're given so many advantages to recommend them. We talk all the time in the alumni spam channel about how great it is to adopt a KA kitten, and it's entirely thanks to your dedication and caring. I recommend the Kitten Academy live stream to anyone who listen, and now I can say firsthand how great an impact that level of socialization and expertise has. I'm sure you'll revisit, uh, resist any kind of expert label, but you certainly know more about cats and kittens than anyone without a degree in them. I grew up with cats and have almost always had at least one, but I've learned so much from the stream and Discord community, and a lot of that Discord knowledge was gleaned by things you've said on stream or in a close-up. And... As they say, the proof is in the pudding. PJ and Rafter are so well-adjusted, trusting, and free to be themselves. I don't always appreciate when they make their opinions known, but I love how quickly they take to new things and how very affectionate they both are. Rafter is almost always right by my side, and PJ will just climb on to me and start purring. Neither of them startle easily, and they're so curious about things that scared Tybalt half to death. Tybalt jumped every single time, my bed uh, shaker alarm went off. Oh, that's, I've never, I don't think I've seen that. That's a cool idea for people that have trouble getting up. Uh, let's see. But Rafter and PJ tried to nose under my pillow. Uh, Tybalt was afraid of the squirrels on my balcony, but Rafter nearly chased one to the ground and would have if I hadn't picked her up. They keep running toward loud, toward loud, loud noises, and Rafter is put together that a knock at the door means I'll open it and there will be something or someone new to sniff on the other side. I won't say they're fearless because the countertop dishwasher <laughs> makes rafters stand up like a meerkat and I accidentally knocked an empty bottle off my bathroom sink and both of their tails were puffed up as they crept closer to see what the noise was. They're bold, but not foolhardy. Pajamas likes to wedge herself into weird hiding spots, but only because she's curious, not actually hiding. In fact, do you remember when PJ fell behind the beanbag chair and Cuddles had to rescue her? I have this uh, folding table stowed behind my bookshelves, and the way I used to have it in there, PJ could get into the little corner where the two bookshelves met, kitty corner to one another. Oh, is that why they call it that? Anyway, <laughs> the way the table was sitting, she could easily climb in, and but out was a lot harder. I saw her go back, heard about 20 seconds of frantic scrabbling, then the tiniest, most piteous meow. My bookshelves are too heavy to move, so I had to lure her back out the way she came. Uh, she did that three more times that weekend. The last time, Raffi followed her. I had to pull the folding table out entirely to get Raffi back out. When I put it back, I stood it up so it blocked the corner off. Maybe eventually I'll find another spot for the table or get rid of it, but for now, I prefer they not explore that thoroughly. Uh, I, do you remember, who was it? Was it Buttons that, that went behind the end table in the bedroom the one time? And then it's, it's not even that high. It's just a regular, like, you know, almost three feet tall, uh, not, not even, um, 
uh, little end table thing. Uh, I think the, what are they, 19 inches? Oh no, that's more than 19. It must be uh, the ones that are uh, like 29 inches is what I'm thinking. Anyway, probably. Um, so she went behind it the same way. It was in the corner. She went behind it and then she couldn't quite pull herself back up. And I got a really cute picture of it that everybody's seen. Uh, I, I don't remember if it was her though. I just remember that happening. Um, I feel like it was. Where was I? Uh, I did manage to find a way to spoil them without burying my apartment in cat toys. They love temptation, so I've been seeing how they like the different flavors. So far, their input has been, yes, please. <laughs> Raptor is still about two thirds PJ's size. It's hard to tell she's growing compared to PJ, but she is. PJ is just so long and lean. She looks like a full grown cat already, although I'm sure she still has some growing to do. I just have to be careful not to be too generous with the treats once she finishes growing. She seems to always have room for more for temptations, no matter how many she already ate. Raffi tends to be sweet-tempered, but she growled at PJ the other day for trying to steal from her pile of treats after PJ devoured her own. Uh, that's cute when they do that. Uh, this week's Chewy order also includes some freeze-dried treats. Mickey's included some with my last order, and they both kept trying to steal the postcard the treats were stapled to. I forgot what it was like to have a cat who wasn't picky about treats. They lose their little kitty minds over anything poultry or dairy based. Uh, anything poultry or dairy based. Fish also seems like a hit and pork is also a yes. <laughs> so that doesn't leave much out. Uh, their exposure to red meat has been limited, but so far it's a yes. PJ just climbed into my arms purring like a tractor and tried to steal my pen. So that's my signal to wrap up. Thank you so much for all the great work you both do with KA. I will always be grateful for my silly, adorable, snuggle support and to my friend Sarah for getting me to start watching the stream years ago. Fondly, Alice the Owl. Thank you so much. That is so cute to get letters from the alumni especially and it's wonderful to hear how well they're doing with you. I just know you love them and that's, that's the most important thing. They're well cared for. So that is all that we ever want for our little kittens. Okay, well, what have we got next then? Uh, let's see, I'm just gonna start grabbing stuff even though I know there's a postcard back there somewhere. This says it is from Ginger Cat Lover. All right, let's knock stuff down as long as it's not the coffee again. And... We also got a package that was not for mailbag that contained a whole bunch of those um, chewy boxes I was talking about making such good kitten litter boxes, which is uh, very nice of, of someone. Thank you. So flapping cat toy, chirping sandpiper. That's funny. I just, I just pushed one of these out of the, the uh, room. Otherwise I could show you it, but um, this says for gadget from Terry. Aw, uh, for hazelnut. Okay. So one for gadget, one for hazelnut. These are really cute. They, they're those little birds that uh, make the chirping noises whenever they move. And I know that, um, I know that Gadget has enjoyed hers. I see it moving around in here all the time. So she'll enjoy having one to take home with her. I guess I'll just write her name on top. So Gadget and one for Hazel. That way I don't forget later on. Perfect. All right, uh, Tear Bear, uh, thank you very much. Tear Bear is making a big showing in today's mailbag. I think there were those two things were both from Tear Bear that we moved out of the room. And I think there's even more in this pile, maybe somewhere. What are you saying? What are you saying? Who just meowed like that? Was that you? You look like it was you. Do you know where the litter box is? Do you need to poop? Do you know? Okay, you'll find it. It's fine. And if you poop somewhere else, it's not like this room has not been entirely pooped already. So, here we go. Moving along then. This is, it just says Kitten Academy. Hopefully we've got a note in here. What do you think, buddy? It's okay. I'm just moving stuff around. You're going to get used to big stuff moving around, okay? That's why we do this. You're going to get used to all this stuff. Ah. Amazon classic, box in a box, for Hazel's hats, or as you see fit, from Ranau. I don't think we ever figured out how that's pronounced, but oh, look at this. Set of four modular cat tunnel cubes. 
Oh, wow. Are these, uh, are they cardboard? They must be cardboard based on the weight of the box. Let's take a look real quick and see. Uh, Renau, thank you. Yes, they are. Oh, that's so cool. They're going to be a lot of fun. They're all wrapped up together. I would pull them out and show you guys. Oh, it says right here, four cardboard cu cubes, two scratching boards, two connecting bridges, 60 connectors. And you guess you can put them together however you want. Build some thrilling tunnels and let your kittens have a super fun time. Oh, wow. That does look like fun. I love the fact that it's got all these different shapes for them to like look and see each other through. It's not just all big round. Uh, they got this stuff. Cats love that. That's one of the reasons why we always like the mesh tunnels. Because uh, especially little kittens, but... Uh, any cat loves to, to be able to like have that where they can see each other but not directly interact and it's a lot of fun for them I think that uh, that way so that is perfect or I guess they do interact but not you know like anyway you know what I'm saying okay uh, Renau thank you here we have a marshmallow bed a nice purple one lavender it says purple and it says Dear Hazelnut, we are so glad you were accepted to have your kittens at Kitten Academy. We hope you enjoy many snoozes in our favorite bed from Tahini and Flair. That's what I suspected, but all right. Tahini and Flair, thank you so much. This is for Hazel. I'm going to write it right on there. I hope that Hazel learns to get along with the faculty. You know, it took, um, it took Gadget a while, too. I wasn't sure that Gadget was going to get along with the faculty, but she, eventually she came around, except... Of course, that you know she doesn't get along so well with Maggie, but that's mostly on Maggie. Uh, so, uh, so I'm hoping that uh, we eventually get the same kind of thing from uh, from Hazel. Uh, but right now, Hazel's very hissy at everybody. In fact, when Hazel's out of her room in the bedroom, you might have seen this last night if you were watching really carefully, and because you couldn't hear it, but uh, in the bedroom. Uh, when she sees her kittens in the bedroom outside of their usual context, outside of their room, she'll hiss at them. And they don't seem to take it too personally, but it doesn't seem extremely friendly, so I don't know what's with that. I know I get confused by context. Like, I, I have a real hard time recognizing people, like the slightest little thing, and, and or nothing at all, and I won't recognize them, but... Um, you know, like if they change their hair, sometimes I don't even recognize them at all. Uh, I'm lucky if I, if I recognize anybody. Anyway, that's not my point. My point is um, uh, that uh, context is especially important that way. Like if, if you always see somebody at school and then you run into them at the grocery store, uh, you know, you might not even realize it's the same person. It's not like I'm dumb. Like I know people go places. I, my brain just doesn't do faces very well. And without that context clue, then it's hopeless. So, um, so yeah, I understand that, you know, hissing at her own kittens is probably just something like that for her. So, uh, let's see, Gadget needs her own motif, so I thought a flower theme would work, as she's such a delicate flower from Merlin to you. Oh, well, I don't know what that's about yet, though, because the stuff I see is not, is not yet... Uh, a flower. This is so cute, though. It says straw babies. They're little baby strawberries. It says straw babies, and they've got the cutest little faces, and the strawberry greens on top are feathers. I know who that's going to be for. I'm sure that's for Crank because of her strawberry theme. And there's another strawberry here, a nice little mat that uh, is probably to put her food on or to let her sit on. I'm sure she would, as cats do. Um, right now, though, she'd probably just poop on it, so we're definitely not going to give that to her today. Uh, okay, now this is a pink flower pet bed, and so that must be about Gadget. Uh, and I'm just assuming Crank for the rest, but we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. I want to see how this pet bed, the flower bed looks. It comes with its own nice container here, but I want to keep the plastic so I can write her name on it. Uh, let's see here. Merlin to you. Uh, boy, I can't, I can't get it out without taking these bags apart, though. Okay, we'll put it back. Wow, this is tricky. It's really stuffed in there. I hope I'll be able to get it back in. Oh, look at that. It's blooming. Okay. Oh, wow. That's a lot bigger than I expected. Oh, that's so cute. It's a very cute little flower, and it's even got a little stem on the bottom. That is adorable. I can just, oh, she'll be so cute. Okay. 
That's, uh, did you say for gadget? Okay. Well, yeah, now I'm never getting it back in there. I can probably just put it back in the plastic. Let me try, though. Oh, this is hopeless. This is ridiculous. Okay, no, I'm not even going to try. It can't be done. I'm declaring it impossible. Uh, I will use your box and just label the entire box for her in a minute once we get to the bottom of it. Guys, it's crinkly paper. Don't be afraid. That's for you to play with. Okay. Now we're getting to some more notes, and the notes say, Sending this as little crankle seems to have a strawberry motif going on. Three small strawberry toys may come separately. From Merlin to you. All right, that's what we thought. And then Gadget needs her own motifs. I thought she's a flower. Uh, I thought a flower theme would work, as she's such a delicate flower. Yes. So, the flower for Gadget is adorable. I'm going to put that right in here. She's delicate flower is obviously, you say that with some sense of uh, sarcasm, because... Um, she is the least delicate cat we've ever had. Like, she is, um, so, she's just strong. Like, she's all muscle, and she's so active, and you can, like, pick her up and squeeze her, where most cats don't put up with that at all. And she just, she doesn't mind a bit. Like, you can just give her a big hug. So, uh, she's wonderful that way, little gadget. I think that's fantastic. Okay, so this must be something flower-related, but let's see. What are you thinking, Teaspoon? It's cool that, that you sent the strawberry stuff for Crank and she's sitting right here in a strawberry. How appropriate. Oh, look at these. They're like little, um, uh, I guess hibiscus is what I'm seeing there. It's kind of abstract, but that's what I think. Those are so pretty. There's two of them in here. And I'm going to put those right back in. What beautiful little pink flowers for her. And I'm going to write her name on the box, and this will just be a box that's entirely hers. That'll make it easy. In fact, here, let's stop drop this in there too since that's also for her so about gadget um i have not yet uh concluded whether she really needs to be adopted with crank or not i think that the jury's out on that for the moment we're just gonna have to wait a little bit longer and see how things shake out um, I was saying at first that it would be so nice for whoever adopts Crank to get her mom, too, because her mom takes such good care of her. She still cleans her and just babies her all the time and, uh, you know, makes sure that, that her little backside is clean. And I think she actually does assist quite a bit in the pooping, uh, although not enough, obviously. Uh, that's not her fault. She just, nobody could. Um, it's not like Gadget's going to learn to give her enemas. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, uh, so I was saying that adopting them together would be really good, especially for Crank's adopter, because that's going to have to be um, somebody that's, that's you know... Well, I guess we don't know for sure until she has her surgery, but the surgery that she's eventually going to have comes with... Everybody has warned us repeatedly. It comes with a, a, a pretty serious possibility of, of her always having, uh, like, a leaky bottom at the very least, or, or even, you know, um, peeing, uh, you know, like, just incontinence generally is something that uh, is a side effect for quite a few kittens that have that condition. Um, the surgeon said it was 40% chance, which is, I think, the best odds anybody was willing to give us. Um, and I just, I just summarize that as saying, you know, it's like, well, even odds, more or less. Uh, pretty close anyway. So... Uh, so, my point being that she's going to need an adopter who really has, um, uh, you know, a special... I guess, love for her and uh, the ability and, and, you know, wherewithal to deal with that. Speaking of, uh, DJ found out that there, well, I found out that there is such a thing as cat diapers for cats. It's, they make them for cats that, that have this sort of issue. And so DJ ordered some to try out just to see how they were, but even the extra, extra small is still too big for her right now. Um, so... So, uh, that's uh, something we're put on the back burner, no pun intended. Okay. Um, but probably something that, that her adopter, well, may need to check out. Again, there's a chance that she has the surgery and this becomes like any other normal kitten at that point, which would just be so nice for her and for us. Um, as far as it goes, though, I, I've gotten really good at my technique of, uh, of taking care of her and... Um, I don't mind doing it, you know, as long as I need to. She just needs to find an adopter that feels the same way. So, here is a beautiful painting of the Columbia River Gorge at sunset. And it says, 
Hello, Marco and his human minions. We send love to all the silly cute kitties at the Academy, especially to Miss Strawberry Princess Crankle Pants. <laughs> Strawberry Princess Crankle Pants. As she grows and makes friends with the vet's office. Yes, indeed. Uh, here's a few goofy video title ideas if you want. Learn these simple tricks to trip up your human. <laughs> the Churu versus Gerber, which treat is tastier? Exclusive interview, Teaspoon spills the tea. Uh, what's inside the chicken closet? Faculty tells all. Crank or possum? <laughs> Crank or possum is just the whole title. I like that. Uh, Hazelnut tries different hats on for size. Those are cute. You know, as a titles, they're, they're cute. It would be cute to almost to like do any of these as an actual video idea. Not that I am ever going to do that, but I think that would be really cute. Uh, thank you so much. So uh, Marco and his human minions. Very sweet. Thanks for the postcard. I always like getting postcards and letters from people. Okay, uh, this is... Why did I think it said a name on here? Oh, there it is. It says Kitten Academy for DJ. Really? Oh, oh, it's okay, kids. Come on. Come on. You're going to get used to all these noises. Uh, yeah, Kitten Academy for DJ from Joe and Sky, And then it says again for DJ to have fun with. It's smart for you to put all that in the address since this is drop shipped from Timu and uh, you couldn't very well leave a note. So uh, for DJ to have fun with, what do you think that could be? It's light and it's soft, so it's like a cat bed or something. For DJ to have fun with. All right, let's see. Ooh. Aww. <laughs> I should have guessed that part. There's two things in here at least. So there is some kind of a bed, but I don't think that's what you meant uh, necessarily for DJ to have fun with. Let's take a look at the bed first. See how many of you have already guessed what the other thing in here would be. You should be able to, knowing that it's from Sky. You might have just seen like, the camera in the reverse. Line. Wait, wait, this is some very crinkly material right here, this plastic. Oh, oh, it looks like another sofa. I think it is. Look at that. Wow, we've just got so many. We've got a, I guess we've got a sofa theme going on in the living room now, in the den, I mean. Because uh, look, there's another one. So that's three in there. Plus, I, you know, I just finished cleaning Teaspoon's blue one that I think started the whole thing. Um, and I found uh, we've got an old one that's not exactly a sofa, but it would fit in the theme as, as a, like a stand-up cat bed uh, in that room too. So maybe I should just put them all in there, move the jungle stuff into the living room, and uh, that could just be the den could be the den full of cozy places to sit. It's cute seeing how much the faculty all use those sofas that are in there right now, including the, the big one that's like this, like a big soft one. I like this one has a little pillow too, a little throw pillow to put on it. DJ's going to like that. But then there's the other thing that you sent from Joe and Sky, and this will make so much sense to everybody the minute you see it. And DJ's going to just, oh, she's going to squee when she sees it. It's fantastic. Crocs, like you bought for Sky. Oh my goodness, because Sky likes to chew on your real Crocs. So you bought her little ones that she can have to, to chew on her own. And she does. She loves playing with them. And I think it's adorable. And DJ thought it was really, really cute. Plus, DJ's had the same issue. She has a pair of Crocs somewhere, or did, and it was just tooth marks. Like the whole thing had been chewed up by every cat and kitten. They're just good for cats to chew on, I guess. So... This is adorable, and I'm going to, well, I'll give it to her after mailbag, but she is just going to love all of that so much. I know I do. I'm excited to see those little Crocs with the kittens, too, and we'll see what DJ wants to do with them. Uh, so, Joe and Sky, thank you very, very much. Okay. Let's see. This is an Amazon. Let's see if there's a note. I see rainbows. I like the rainbows. Let's just see. Wow, that is some very rainbow. It's like each kitten, I mean each kitten, each mouse is a different rainbow color and then they all have rainbow tails. That's pretty cool. Speaking of rainbows, I was just thinking about moving Gadget into the rainbow room upstairs and cleaning this room so these kittens can actually make the move down here. They're so active, they need a lot more space now than what they've got even with the two annexes. Uh, and it would be nice to get them down here and give them both rooms. Now, I'm not going to do that today, but probably in the next week would be my goal to have them move down here. And because the rainbow room then is the only room that's open, that's probably where Gadget will end up. 
Uh, let's see, probably with Crank more often than not if Crank's going to continue to be feeling so good. So these are For the Hats from Creole Moss. Creole Moss, thank you so much for Hazel's Little Tiny Kittens. Uh, and there's actually five of them in here, so that's perfect for each of them and her. Uh, one for mom and one for each kitten. Uh, there's my pen. I'm just going to write hats on it. And then later on, somebody's going to be like, these are clearly mice. Why does it say hats? So confusing. Okay. Put it right back there. Uh, Creole moss. Thank you very much. Those are, those are very pretty. I love how rainbow they are. Okay. This is, I think, our one hand-packed box for today's mailbag. So, uh, let's see. And it doesn't have any of the usual hallmarks of our usual senders. Interesting, interesting. Okay. It does have a knife guard, so it's somebody... Oh, no, okay, I think we know who this is then. I recognize it now that it's open. And it says, Dear Mr. A and Dr. DJ... Uh, wow, these are... I'm just sorry, I was distracted by these fish. They're so cool. Look at that. One is cork. And it feels t like the texture feels like it almost might be... I guess it's not, but it's got something going on there. And then one is... The other two are woven. So cool. Um, okay. Hello to Hazel Muttner, Tiny Hats, Faculty Gadget Crank, and Humans at Kitten Academy. What are you saying, Teaspoon? You want out now? Buddy, we got to give you some eye meds. That eye has been acting up. Um, let's see. I'm so happy to see that Hazel Nut and her kitten are doing so well. Little Crank looks just like Teaspoon's twin. They are both so cute. The tiny hats are growing up so fast, and they're so advanced for their ages. Hazelnut is so sweet and such a great mom. I love Gadget's big eyes and how playful she is. Her job of inspecting all that comes in for mail drop, mailbag is the perfect job for her. I don't disagree. I, I wish we could have her in here today, but um, I, don't, I don't actually know if I've, I've really exposed her to the other kittens yet or how she'll react, and I didn't want to just have to deal with that right now. So uh, for all I know, she might just you know, be one of those moms that just will mom any kitten. I kind of doubt it, though. Um... I'm sending my usual mini blankets and toys for Hazelnut and her tiny hats to take to their forever homes. The extra toys and food can be used as you see fit. Thank you for all you do for mom, cat, kittens, non-mom cats, and the faculty. I've learned so much from watching Kitten Academy. Watching the mailbag on Saturdays has given me great ideas for toys that cats like. My cats love the laser light that spins around, Rosie the Rat, and the wand toys. Yeah, those three are all good. Uh, that, uh, the, there's several laser toys that we've used, but the green one that's in the bedroom that's got the little cat head on it and the, um, the, the feather that pops out and the ball track, uh, that is such a good one. And one of my favorite things about that particular laser is that it's so quiet compared to some of the others. Like, it doesn't keep you up all night. Uh, but um, it's also, you know, it's also reasonably fast and adjustable and just, it's rechargeable. It's just, it's great. It's, it's my favorite of all the lasers so far. Uh, what was I saying? Rosie the Rat. Yes, another classic. Um, okay, and wand toys, of course. There's so many talented people who share their talents with everyone who watches. I enjoy hearing the poems, the items people make, and all the wonderful works of art. Thank you to all. From Rose... Tucker, Toby, and Tessa. Let's take a look at this real quick, buddy, since you're right here. Blink, okay. Blink, yep, okay. All right, I'm not seeing any scratch. Yeah, just a little bit irritated, I guess, huh? Okay, now you're super irritated. <laughs> you and your eye, aren't you? I know. Okay, we'll be, give you some teramycin in a little bit, I think. Uh, Rose, Tucker, Toby, and Tessa. Yes, of course you are. I recognize that as soon as I saw this. We've got the, your usual little uh, personalized blanket and a t little cat toy bag for each of our kittens. Uh, the cat toys, it's got the, the classic um, like Loganberry mice is what I'll call them. It's got little rattle mice. It's got a couple fun tubes, some springs, a little ball, a fur mouse, ooh, and uh, a little tiny catnip kicker. And then um, on top of the toys, it's got a little blanket for each of them. This one has an adorable fox with a sort of a gray uh, interior or uh, backside to it. Then that's for Bonnet. Um, this one is for Fez. 
Fez gets the same kind of toys and this uh, cartoony uh, dogs, it looks like. Fez gets some dogs to play with. And uh, I don't know what to call this pattern. It's very cool. Then we have Stetson, who gets cars and uh, like a plaid, like a flannel looking plaid. Very cool for Stetson. DJ, uh, I've been calling him Stepson for a while, and now DJ picked that up, and it's probably going to stick because she thinks it's very entertaining to call him Stepson. Uh, let's see here. This is for hazelnut, and it's got a little pattern with birds and flowers, or plants on it, birds and plants, and then also a plaid, a different plaid. Beautiful. And then I think there's one more for Derby, of course. And this one has a gray interior with gray cartoon kitties on it. There we go. What a great set of little blankets for these guys. And, uh, and the toys too. I know they're going to love those. So you've sent some also packs of toys that include all the usual suspects. Uh, obviously the pattern fish, you've got two sets of those. These are really cool. And I love the little raffia tail. Uh, the other ones have feather tails. This one doesn't even have a tail. It's got feathers blowing out of its blowhole like a whale. That's a weird one for the cork one. I don't know why they didn't put it in the back like they did for the others. Of course, I don't know what it means to have it in the back either. It's not like fish have those things going on. Well, actually, if you've ever had a fish tank, uh, a lot of times they kind of do uh, when they poop. It's Sometimes they get a long streamer hanging on. Uh, remind me of somebody I know. Okay, this is uh, some sort of a little beetle and a firefly. These are so cool because I've got so many different textures and materials happening. Uh, Doopy, I got something here for you. Do you want to take it? The sofa to go in the den and Joe sent your own Crocs. Those are all for you. Uh, she'll just want to go out. She'll hiss at the kittens. She thinks this is her room now. Yeah, uh, we'll get it later. I'll put them out there after mailbag. No, not to let Maggie in, though. It's up to you. I'll, I'll get it in a minute. We're almost done here, I think. Uh, these have so many different materials. I love it. Uh, there's like a little lace for the firefly wing, I mean, for the dragonfly wing, and then behind it, there's also a different material that's sort of got that um, iridescence to it. And for the beetle, he's got this cool textured mesh, and then this other, uh, like a burlap covered in something kind of shiny that's got a cool pattern cut out of it and also the iridescent ones behind that. These are so pretty. Oh, there we go. Really, really cool. And then we have some real firm mice. Always a big hit. We have some cans of Nulo freestyle chicken and chicken liver recipe in broth. I think that's going to be something they're really going to like. Um, and then finally, oh, I thought this was one thing, but it's not. It's a stack of ladybugs. Little ladybug scratchers. Aren't those cute? There's three of them in there. That's perfect. I know they like this kind of stuff too because they, you know, you set it down and they can bat around and try to get the little ball out, which is impossible. Um, but they will enjoy trying. That's a great toy. Oh, so much fun. Rose, uh, Tucker, Toby, etc. Uh, Tessa, there we go. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to try to put all this back in here, but it's, I'm not going to make it fit. I'm just going to have to stack it on top for now. Oh, there we go. Two more. Okay. I've got a kitten in my lap, too. Okay. Let's, uh, let's slide this on over. There we go. Out of the way for the moment. Hi, what are you doing? Don't jump into my coffee. Uh, we've got a kitten back here playing with my shoe. I don't know if you can see that. Now you probably can. That is Derby on the shoe, and this is um, Bonnet here on my leg. These kids are all super snuggly and just so good with people, but of them, Bonnet is definitely in first place. Okay. Sorry, I got a message there, and I just wanted to see if it was anything important. It was not. Okay. Um, moving right along. Let's see what's next. Oh, I know who this is from too. I think you will as well when you see that it is full of ball tracks, ball towers, I should say. And look at these fun tubes already all made. Also springs. You can't see them, but they're springs. 
So we all know who this is from. Then it says, Hazel's Hats, we hope you enjoy one of our favorite toys. Love, Tahini and Flair. Tahini and Flair have sent these same things for every class. So uh, they're wonderful toys for every single buddy. And the kittens will love them. They all deserve their own ball track. Fun Tube's always a hit. Spring's constant perennial favorite. I don't know why I said perennial. They're just a favorite all the time. Uh, okay. Oh, there we go. I knew there was one more package from Tear Bear, and this is it. All right, and the end of mailbag as well. So, you kind of started us off, and you'll finish us off here. Aha! It is the Amazon Classic Box in a Box. So, let's get this box out of the box. Let's see if there is a note. There's no note. No notes. Got no notes on that. All right. Push that right back. Oh, that looks like a box for Teaspoon to play in, though, with that flap hanging the way it does. Did he leave? I think he left. Uh, Teaspoon loves a bag, like a, like a shopping bag, um, like especially food delivery bags, uh, grocery bags. If, if you put a bag down and Teaspoon sees it, he is instantly in it every single time. It's so cute. In fact, uh, DJ just gave him one this morning over there because she saw a bag and put it down. The minute he sees it, he's right in it. Okay, well, we don't know, have any idea what this is because the only thing on the outside are code numbers and none of the code numbers are even checked. So we don't know which code. Oh, wait, QCP117. So this is a QCP117. Okay, let's see what that means. It sounds like a movie by George Lucas or something. Let's see. George, are you in here? Okay. Well, we, we actually know what this is, uh, even though you probably won't recognize it. Or maybe you will, if you're... Uh, what do you think? You recognize it? It's from last week's mailbag. It is another one of the blue sofa. Um, and let's just see, is it actually blue? This is the cushions. This is the sofa side. No, it's not. This is gray. You can see it right here, this lovely gray color. So we now have a pink one, the blue one, the yellow one, the gray one. And if I bring the other blue, the classic blue back up, we'll have that one. It really is going to be a room full of sofas at this point. Uh, that is crazy. Um, I don't see why not to put it out though. And I can even get that little lamp that I made out of the doorstop, even though it falls over constantly, that would go well in there. And I, there's the cardboard sofa that's in here. Why not add that one too, right? Um, we might even have a spare cardboard sofa downstairs I could throw in. All right. Well, I guess we know what's going to happen in that room. Uh, Tear Bear, thank you so much for yet another sofa. Um, right. I guess that's it. That was Mailbag. Thank you so much, everybody. It's a bunch of wonderful stuff for a bunch of wonderful kittens. These guys are so good. And uh, it took the entire Mailbag, but um, I see Bonnet has finally decided to settle down in my lap. A little bit late. A little late now, aren't you, kiddo? These pants are filthy. I didn't realize that. Um, makes sense, though. I'm just going to have to change those, take a shower, all that stuff. Um, everybody else is starting to settle down, too. I see... Um, let's see. Uh, names Names are hard. Stepson is inside the Infinity Scratcher and completely asleep, just passed out. Underneath the Infinity Scratcher is Derby, who's looking at me and kind of popping in and out and being cute. And then watching him from over here, oh, is uh, um, Fez, who I thought was going to fall asleep, but now is gonna, he's responding to that play stuff that Derby's doing. They're going to play a little bit. Very cute. Well, I'm going to get this stuff cleaned up. And that'll be another good experience for these kittens, me making a bunch of noise and going in and out and opening and closing doors. They're going to freak out, but uh, that's good for them. They'll, they'll get it sorted. All part of your training, kiddo. Yes, it is. Okay, well, I'm going to hop to it. Kiddo, you are looking so good. I definitely need to give you another one of those treatments, though. I'm sorry about that. We just want to make sure we stay ahead of all that, okay? She loves her little strawberry bed. She loves all, any kind of a pod, though. She's, she's just a big pod kitten. Uh, she also sleeps on, like, soft stuff, like little marshmallow beds and stuff all the time, which uh, I guess... Makes sense if you got a belly that's sore most of the time. I bet that takes the weight off a little bit. Uh, although, I, like I said, I think she's feeling much, much better today. 
like a whole new kitten. Oh, that's sweet. Do you want to check out your buddy? Maybe you want to go in the strawberry and hang out with another kitten? No? You want to go play with your brothers? Because I'm getting up. You can't hang out with me now. Okie dokie. Thanks again, everybody. Uh, that's a lot of cool stuff. I'm going to put this right in the sofa room after I cut this tag off. It's right in front. I know DJ's not going to go for that. Can I have those kitchen scissors? Got to cut this tag off. Wow. What? No, it's right in front. It's too visible. Okay. Where do you want your Crocs? Should I put them here for now? You're going to give one to Teaspoon? Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm going to get all the sofas that we have and put them all in the den. Yeah. And just be a sofa room. Yeah. And all the plants. Yeah. All right. I should turn this mic off before I forget. I mean, a little late for that, but before I forget again. Big box, so we can carry all this stuff down once. Let's go for this. These, I, this I think I need to deploy sooner rather than later. I'll forget entirely what it is downstairs. So I don't. Oh, oh, oh! Hi, 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 hi! Mm -hmm. the stairs for now. <laughs> okay, this is our big box. Now that goes entirely up. Let's see, what else do we have to bring? These little tiny strawberries are so cute. I can't even... I love this dragonfly in this bug. Those are so cool. first.
brought a teaspoon of soap, like I was saying I would, put it in the den. Uh, I'm not actually going to take away the hippopotamus yet. And obviously, it'll get moved to wherever we do the jungle theme in due time, or the animal theme, but... Uh, Are you just going to move them here now? No, not now, but this week. Is Diane still there? No, she moved to the... Oh, well, I guess her mom can come back. Yeah, her mom will be fine in a minute after I get the kids out. Uh, what was I saying? I was saying, oh, because I always catch the faculty in the hippopotamus. Uh, Eddie loves to go in there, and I've seen Loganberry in there. So I'm not going to take it away from him quite yet. of this. Oh, I should have brought this downstairs with the stuff. That's okay. In case you like this video, we'll be here soon enough. But not today. Today we've got to take you upstairs so that we can bring Gadget down here to hang out with Crank for a little bit. Even though Crank also doesn't get to live here right now. I don't think I just don't trust her to return yet when you know she kind of fell off that beanbag chair and got hurt the first time. Um, Probably being too cautious though, she really seems like she's doing great. Oh, look at her getting up to play. That's so good to see her have that.
let them play until they're going to settle down and then bring them back upstairs. Whoa, all the way to the top. Are you going to be able to figure out how to get back down again, Bonnie? It's a long way down. Stepson is trying so hard to get Crank's attention. It really doesn't seem like she is paying attention now. She's watching these kids climb all over this thing. What are you doing? You're hanging on there like a monkey. You want some monkey? Oh, well, I missed getting the monkey picture. You got your feet on the ground again. hard to play with her without like hitting her. She's just completely focused on these guys. Sweep it under the rug. You guys don't have water dish in here right now. You are a wild child, buddy.
right, kids, I was going to leave you here, but now we got all the place going for lunch. we got to go upstairs for that. We had to kick your mom out of the bedroom where she was. We're going to bring her down here. Not your mom. Your mom, Craig. Okay, see you later. Hey buddy, you want to go? Come on. Gosh, I know you were left here all by your lonesome. Darby went out. Darby. Okay. Kiddo, I'm going to leave you here for just a few minutes with your mom, okay? We're going to keep an eye on you, though. We start running around or climbing that beanbag chair, and we're going to take you upstairs. We'll take you upstairs in a few minutes anyway. You said it, kid. I feel the same way.